one thing we haven't really touched on at all, right, which you, you sort of mentioned is is other areas of of XR, whether it's not necessarily at home VR, but things like location based experiences um, and, uh, you know, like more accessible either pop up stuff or museums and those sorts of things. Is there any particular sort of narrative um, or, or really good cinematic experiences you guys have seen out there in the world through location based type work? It's a loaded question because it, it, it means it means picking among some of my friends favorite. <laughs> yes, yeah, so probably setting you up a little bit here. <laughs> no, you're, you're experiencing that space. Yeah. Um, so I guess maybe then we can we can rephrase it. What are there any differences to or like is is that a, is that a different tool entirely outside of just a distribution technique, right? How can you utilize them? And are there any any ways where cinematic storytelling in in a in an out of home environment have, have have an impact like what, what's making these things really really positive whether it's museums or entertainment or you know lb escape places well i think that might be the 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 landscape vertical that has produced the least use cases quite frankly uh, because the habits of the consumer are not such that they're going to go stand in line for a passive narrative based experience but also um the monetization structure doesn't really exist from that by virtue of the fact that it's so that short form digestible you know most of most of my personal exposure to what you would call a look an lbe an out of home vr setup for narrative has been uh either these festival type things where you know you bounce around the floor and you get to experience these things as like a first look to what what's coming out or in the aggregate the winners of those festivals where you get to like go see them in um you know, strung together as a, as a collection for, you know, a reasonable price point. I think that if, if, if we can call cinema a location-based experience, going to the movies and whatnot, especially like IMAX and the like, then I would say, um, I would say that's a, that's a really interesting model um, because not that you would necessarily be, in a traditional movie theater without a VR headset watching the, these immersive pieces. Although I know some companies are doing that, they're building VR theaters where, you know, they're just using the theater environment and the habits of selling tickets and people going there and knowing where to go and why not to go into a proper movie theater and put on a headset and then watch immersive content, um, which is a burgeoning space and kind of interesting. But I also really like the idea of shared experience. Alex was talking about, um, you know, dome, dome, Dome environments and things of that nature. A lot of um, a lot of 360 content natively ports into the dome display environment. I mean, surprising amount, like upwards of 80 percent or more, can just natively work. You know, slightly tweaking the framing or, or whatnot. Um, and I've had recent experiences in programming some mixed reality activations where we're using top-down projection to cover an entire volume. That's, you know, a dome, a dome style room, but paint the walls and floors and ceiling, all of the immersive Van Goghs and whatnot. And that affords a bunch of people the opportunity to be in the room at the same time, watching the same VR experience that has more legs from a narrative standpoint, to my mind, than standing in line, paying you $15 and getting your, your 20 minute, you know, narrative VR thing, because suddenly it brings back the, all the things that we love about the shared experience of of going to the cinema and it affords you the opportunity to stuff popcorn in your face without a headset getting in the way or you know uh, while you're watching this thing so um, those sites are probably going to be pop-ups or, or reskinned you know repurposed environments uh, because I don't know if there will ever necessarily be like a whole you know AMC style well, it's a that's a big theater chain here in the states um, if there'll be a, a, a chain that does these types of shared mm -hmm. experiential environments, but could be really powerful. And it could be a great way to bridge the gap between these these filmmakers who would otherwise be relegated to the festival circuit and everybody gives them an award for how great it is and their ability to make any money from the consumer who may or may not have a, a headset, but still wants to go out and see something cool. 
Yeah, absolutely. You get that collective experience, right? And that's nice because, like Mark was saying, you can look over, oh, my God, you see that, to your buddy that's next to you, you know, or you can gasp and you can have these shared emotional moments when you're in a, a space like that, you know, where you get to be, have these projection-style VRs. And I think also from a business standpoint, because, again, it's going to always come down to dollars and cents or pounds or whatever the case may be, uh, that the capital investment to repurpose something like that is a lot easier than to say, oh, we're going to build a you know, 1,000 new screens or 1,000 new environments uh, from scratch just for these kind of uh, experiences. I don't, I don't foresee that happening uh, because it's just too, it's too prohibitive from a capital standpoint. But I definitely see that the, I agree with Mark 100%. I think that the, the way to go, you know, in order to try to monetize this most effectively and the most give people the most collective moving going experience is to do these, you know, uh, projection style VRs versus waiting in line to put a headset on and then trying to figure out how to use that headset and all those kind of things.